All right, finally, well, not finally, I've got a bunch of different stories, but this is kind of an interesting story I caught off last night. You're not going to see this publicized very many places, but I didn't know this, but it turns out that the cocaine industry right now is experiencing a historic boom. Uh, you all guys might have thought that the peak of cocaine was during the 1980s. You know, there's that uh, series called Narco, uh, Pablo Escobar, Medellin Cartel, all of that. That was the time where cocaine consumption peaked and the power of the cartels was at its highest. No, 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 no. Today, uh, the industry produces 2,000 tons of cocaine per year. Uh, the amount of land planted with coca is about 200,000 hectares, 500,000 acres, half a million acres. Uh, that's five times more, five times more than it was in, um, in, uh, when Escobar was gone down in 1993. So the industry is five times bigger than it was in its supposed heyday. Uh, what you're seeing as a result is, well, it's hard to tell what the cause and what the effect is, but what you're seeing at the same time is consumption of cocaine skyrocketing. It's, it's grown dramatically in South America. It's grown dramatically in, in, uh, in uh, wealthier countries now in Asia, and, and it's skyrocketed in, uh, in Europe. So cocaine consumption is through the roof. Cocaine prices have actually declined because there's so much supply of it. Um, you know, uh, arrests for cocaine possession in Australia have quadrupled since 2010. Uh, U.S. overdoses uh, that involve cocaine have quintupled, quintupled over the past decades as, uh, as dealers took to mixing cocaine with synthetic opioids. Um, Ecuador has uh, imposed a state of emergency on its large port in Guayaquil. I've been in Guayaquil. I've spoken at universities in Guayaquil. Uh, this year, because of uh, the cocaine trafficking through the port, uh, car bombs, explosions, contract killings, uh, gang violence. While the U.S. market has always been the traditional market for cocaine, uh, Europe uh, seizures have tripled in just the last five years in Europe. In Africa, cocaine seizures have increased tenfold from 2015 to 2019, to a large extent because Africa not only is now consuming cocaine, but is also, um, uh, you know, uh, the cocaine often travels from Colombia and other areas, primarily Colombia, uh, to Africa, and then from Africa it's smuggled into Europe. Uh, that's one of the main paths into Europe. Uh, uh, in Asia, cocaine seized in Asia has increased 15-fold over the last five years. 15-fold. Uh, my guess is that's because uh, consumption uh, among the middle class and the wealthy in places, uh, places like East Asia, uh, where there now is a massive middle class and, and a, a massive number of people who can afford the cocaine, has probably increased dramatically. So uh, I'm sure that you're seeing a huge spike in cocaine use in places like China, uh, but also in other parts of Asia that have, uh, over the last 40 years, become wealthy. Um, great volumes, huge volumes of the drugs are seized in ports of Turkey, Eastern Europe, uh, which are some of the new routes, uh, routes uh, for bringing cocaine into the heart of Europe. Um, the purity of the cocaine, so quality has gone up. So um, uh, the purity uh, of cocaine in the streets of Europe uh, is now 60%. That's up from 37 in 2010. And um, if you look, if you study the wastewater of cities, you can tell what people are using because there's remnant there. And um, in, over the last decade, uh, cocaine remnants residue in um, Wastewater of major cities in Europe has more than doubled. Anyway, the consequence of this, other than people using all over the world, is a massive increase in violence associated with cocaine. Massive increase in violence in Colombia, uh, where most of the cocaine of the world is uh, still produced. Uh, but that, of course, affects other countries in their region, like Bolivia and Ecuador, which also produce quite a bit of cocaine. I was surprised you're not seeing huge quantities of cocaine coming from Venezuela. 
I, I would have I would have expected that, and I'm surprised it 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 hasn't happened. It it hasn't happened. Um, you know, uh, one kilo of cocaine. It's interesting how the differences are between countries. A kilo of cocaine costs very little to produce, very little to produce. Right, the workers making this get about $1.9 for every 25 kilograms of the leaves they harvest. Um, but uh, let's say it costs, it costs to produce a kilo of cocaine about, in, in its final form, about $630. Uh, that kilo of, of cocaine uh, wholesales, not at retails, wholesales, uh, in the United States for $30,000. It wholesales in Germany for fifty thousand dollars, and in Australia it wholesales for one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and that's all reflective of the difficulty and the risk of getting it into those particular countries and the penalties that you, as a as a trafficker, would suffer if you got caught by bringing it in. Uh, it's a function of the risk, risk return. Right? So, wow! Look at those profit margins. Those profit margins means that more and more organized crime is centered around the shipment of cocaine. They find more and more sophistication in shipping it without getting detected. Uh, you put it in a container with bananas. Uh, port inspectors are not going to delay banana shipments uh, in, order to, in order to search for drugs because bananas will rot in the container, so they clear it out. So they travel with food. They, they become super you know, uh, super efficient at this. But also, on the production side, it turns out that farming cocaine has become super efficient because of the profit margins. Because, uh, you know, and because the, the, the Colombia government and the U.S. government, oh, this was interesting. You know, it, it used to be that the Colombian government used to spray cocaine fields with pesticides. But then, uh, but then in 2015, they stopped. They stopped because the United, uh, the, the WHA, the World Health Organization, said that they, the pesticide was probably a carcinogen and therefore shouldn't be sprayed, so they stopped spraying. So since 2015, uh, the, 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 the cocaine farmers now don't have to deal with this pesticides, have invested heavily in increasing productivity of the land using, uh, using fertilizers, using more efficient methods, and, and that has grown. Anyway, violence has exploded. More people are dying. Uh, more and more people are using. Profit margins have gone through the roof of the cartels. So more violence is involved. More risk-taking is involved. And this just shows you what would happen if it was legalized. If we legalized a $650 pound of cocaine, or, or kilo of cocaine, sorry, would not sell for tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars it would sell for maybe thousands of dollars. The profit margins would be small. Um, there would be less cocaine. Uh, uh, there would probably be uh, a, a lot. Uh, there would be a dramatic decrease in violence. The violence would all go away. Uh, the price of cocaine at the retail market would drop dramatically. People would not have to be violent in order to get the money in order to buy the cocaine. It's true that in the short run, Cocaine use would probably rise, particularly among the poor who now could afford it. Uh, but then once the coolness of it would disappear, cocaine use would decline. Uh, a whole industry would arise to get us off of uh, cocaine addiction. Uh, there would be many, many tools to reduce addiction. But think of the tens of thousands, maybe more, of lives saved as a consequence of the reduction in violence. Think of the fact that these cartels would be decimated, and again, they would have to resort to productive activity. Uh, it's not clear how you, you know, if, if uh, you know, uh, cocaine production, you know, might increase, but profit margins would decrease dramatically. Uh, it's likely the Colombian government would actually uh, regain uh, authority over the land in which cocaine produced. Today, they don't have that. The cartels run uh, all that part of Colombia. Basically, it's, it's anarchy there. It's run by cartels that are constantly fighting with each, uh, each other. These are areas that are super violent. Uh, think about the decline in the, in the uh, Mexican cartels and, and the ability of law and order, um, of law and order to actually 
um, uh, be instituted in vast areas in Mexico, which now have no law and order because the cartels are running things. Uh, you know, the benefits of drug legalization are astronomical. They're, they're really, truly are astronomical in terms of just human life. If you value human life, you have to be for drug legalization as, as a major uh, major policy uh, action. And if you look at the country like Portugal that has basically decriminalized drugs, drug use has not exploded among young people in Portugal. Drug use is not, uh, you know, a, a major problem in Portugal. They have normalized it, and, and that normalization has actually produced, uh, resulted in, in less deaths, less crime, uh, and, and, and fewer problems. What we need is a global effort, a global effort, uh, to um, decriminalize cocaine, heroin, and other drugs. Um, uh, you know, heroin, of course, is produced in Afghanistan. Much of it is, and that funds uh, uh, that funds much of the Taliban's effort to, uh, you know, basically suppress, oppress their own population. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.